So this is uh, all the M-State material that I've collected. Now this has been precipitated from a number of different sources, but in all cases it was precipitated uh, up to 10.78 pH and then taken down to 1 and then back up to 8.5, no more than 8.7 around there and supposedly that's all M state. I'm not totally sure all the magnesium's out of it so I'm going to take a rest. Gee, I hope this works. I'm going to take it up to 12 again and supposedly that will dissolve all the M state and leave the magnesium behind and so I'll rack it off and then take it back down to uh, below 9 and then that should be as pure as I can get it. Oh, fingers crossed. There's all my hard work. Put a mark on the bottle, filled it up with water, teared it, chipped it out. 155 mil. That's the sum total of my work. And I've now placed it in a jar. This is my setup. So I'll be taking that up to a pH of 12 or so. And I use a big syringe like that. I'm pretty good at using that now. Well, I wasn't expecting this. The one on the left is just a regular de dead sea salt precipitate. Um, just for comparison purposes, the one I've been working in is 109. And the 150 mil of precipitate, trying to push it to 12 is... And this is the graph. You can see the resistance at pH of 12. Used probably um, 580 mils and the precipitate has grown from a 150 mils to more like six or seven hundred mils that's, that's just ridiculous uh, you can see the temp uh, the color change in the in the liquid so it's some sort of gold chloride is a possibility in that uh, liquid by the colour, so I really don't know what to do now. I'm running out of space. I think I will rack off the solution and keep set that aside and possibly keep pushing the solution uh, with um, sodium uh, hydroxide and see what happens. I may, I may even split it in half and add some water to one half to just create some space in the solution and and push the two halves a bit further and see see where I end up. So the M state solution is racked off and uh, kept in that bottle there. So now the so now everything's split into three. Uh, I've taken the precipitate and divided it roughly in half, labeling A and B, and the solution will be C. Now one oh nine B, I'll I've placed a mark on both of them where the precipitate is and on B then I'll roughly double the volume by adding uh, filtered water and then I'll just um, keep pushing uh, sodium hydroxide into it and just watching the pH it's hovering around around the 12 between 11.9 and 12.1 and I'll just see what happens I'm having trouble getting the pH any higher anyway I'll see what happens and this is the graph showing that Pretty spectacular. B, I was able to press along um, with the pH of 12, 12.1 quite readily, and you can see I've accumulated about 100 mil extra above the mark next to the grey tag there, and you can probably see it's got a little bit of a gold tinge to it. Um, I've been totally unsuccessful with. 109, uh, its pH came in 11.9. I've not been able to get it to 12. Um, so I put 100 mil in B, but I put 200 mil in A, and if anything, the pH has gone down. So it's been uh, often at 11.6 and 11.7. I've uh, double checked it 
uh, against the buffering solution and it seems to be accurate and yet the water container that I've got the meter sitting in is reading 12.3, 12.4 and that is just fresh water that has just been dipped out of 109A and has been managed to take the pH up. So what I think I'm going to take a risk at doing is putting some water in 109A and see what happens with the with the pH. Um, I suspect it might actually go up and it's something to do with having the space. Alright, I'll try that. Okay, by adding 400 mils of water I was able to get the pH to rise from 11.6 to 12 and as I added another 600 it didn't go above 12. And this is the graph, you can see the resistance at pH of 12. I did put the a fresh washing water for the um, pH meter and as you can see that's reading 12.4, 12.5 so there's enough um, base in the 109 solution to cause it when diluted further to go to 12. Point five but not enough to be able to take it above 12. Uh, very very interesting so I think I'll stop it there let it settle <laughs> not least because I'm out of room and then compare them tomorrow. Well the settling's done you can see the pH there has crept up 12.3 overnight so I'd be pretty sure that all the M state that would be out of or in solution now that's allowing that pH to go up interestingly you can see the I hope the the color in the in the liquid it is a bit fainter in 109 but then 109a but then remember that's actually more dilute so I was pretty scared but I'm hopeful I'll be able to recover something out of that I'll probably filter the precipitate as well. Um, but as, as for now, I think I'll rack off A and B into the same bottle, although I'm going to have more than a bottle. And then hopefully get a precipitate by taking the pH down again. So far, so good. All the liquid's been racked off and stored away, and the precipitate then I've got an upside down cordial bottle which I usually use for something else doesn't you don't really need a tap on it for this and I've just got an arrangement of filter paper and so on in it which I've put all the precipitate in there and so it's uh, it will filter through there overnight so it's been going for about five minutes now so I think we're on the way to from worries to the next worry, what's going to happen, whether I can reclaim my precipitate. After getting up a couple of times during the night, you can see how much I've collected in 109A from the filtered precipitate. Uh, it's pretty much stopped, but I uh, put a coaster wrapped in glad wrap on top of the precipitate, just fold it down with a, a skewer, and I've just sat a drink bottle full of water on top of it just to compress the last bit out of it. it seems to be getting some more out and I may even I may even add some water as a separate uh, reclaim operation if it looks okay uh, then I may keep that as well but anyway I won't bother you with the details I'll, I'll see when we uh, precipitate all this which we'll probably do in three lots so you can there seems to be so much of it. Okay, cheers. Well, it's working. I've started on the apparently the weakest solution with a lighter colour. And it's taken 150 ml to get the pH down to 11.9 from 12.5, which it had crept up to overnight. And I'm just using a little, just hanging my syringe there and putting a measured amount in it. 
It's got a little tap on it. I'll just try and zoom in close. You can just see there's a precipitating suspension there. So it's going, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. So I'll take that all the way down to 8.7-ish and then back up to 10.78. Now for an update on the precipitate, then I did come up with the idea of mixing up a solution of 12.1 pH and, um, and pouring that in so to leach it. And so that's the leaching there in the cup and you can see that, uh, that it's 12.5, uh, 12.4. And I'm just pressing that out now, so um, I'll probably just uh, leach it the once. All right, so I'm going to press ahead, and and uh, hopefully I'll just um, stop when I've done all of these solutions uh, before uh, coming back up. I think I'll stop at 8.7, down to 8.5, 8.4 actually and two to three centimeters of precipitate so now I'm going to take it up to 10.78 uh, for for that and all of them obviously the other two haven't been done yet so catch you then all done as far as I can see the solutions are all fairly clear fairly similar maybe 109A is or 110A has got a bit of a yellow tinge but then again it has got the yellow marker in it um, pH meter. So C and B have settled a little bit, uh, whereas A is I only just finished that just then. You can just see the precipitate coagulating. It's very fine while you're stirring it, but it very soon aggregates itself. You can see I ran it up to 10.7. And these are the graphs for the solutions from 12 down to 8.5 and back up again uh, to 10.7 side by side. Never a dull moment. After 20 hours of settling, then B and C are completely clear. Uh, C's got a coloured glass, so it doesn't look quite as uh, the same clear colour, but it is. Um, however, C's 9.7, the pH has dropped. B, it's increased to 11.1 and in A as you can see it's gone completely cloudy now this is the one that was um, a wine color as well slightly and its pH is risen to 11.6 so whatever was holding the pH uh, back has now released it so what I think I'll do is I'll rebalance B and C let them settle and that'll give a little bit more time for A um, so another eight hours or so, uh, then I'll rack off B and C and then uh, keep that precipitate and then A, I think I'll split it and the first one of them I'll run back to one and see what happens and then decide what to do with the other. Well A was split into one and two and one was taken down to pH of one and the other um, up to twelve and neither of them cleared and neither of them did the precipitate dissolve so I racked off the solution, threw the precipitate away and both of them I heated in the oven I uh, didn't boil it but brought it to uh, close to boiling uh, for a couple of hours and that was the result just managing the pH so now I'll take them both uh, down to 8.5 and see what happens. Well, that was a success. They were both taken to 8.5 and then up through to 10.7. They're settling out nicely. Just finish that very minute. If I zoom in there, you can just see the precipitate forming and and dropping out. So that'll be it. I'll let that settle, rack it off, and put the precipitate in with the rest. So this is the graph where A2 was brought back to pH of 8.5 and then it was brought back up to 10.7 along with A1 which uh, was carried all the way from uh, 1 all the way up uh, to 10.7. End of a saga. So it's all back together again, it hasn't quite fully settled. 
uh, but you can see from the mark down there on the on the bottom that it's well above that mark. That will settle down over, overnight. It tends to compress down. Um, I'm happy that I've reclaimed everything after the purification process. So 